Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Drew Geraci, and today I'm going to show you how you can easily and professionally render out multiple clips from your timeline at the same time. It's going to be really fun. This is going to allow you to create curated shots for clients for them to use as they see fit, or if you're into selling stock video, how to edit, color grade, and put all of your shots on the same timeline to save time and energy when exporting. I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve 17 to do this as it's the best editor out right now to do that um, when you compare it to something like Adobe Premiere Pro or Apple's Final Cut Pro. It's a fairly simple process, but the results really help speed up your workflow, especially if you want to color grade inside of DaVinci Resolve and then edit inside of another NLE. It is possible to do this in other NLEs, but you'll quickly find out that there's plenty of caveats when trying to do this in something like Premiere Pro, which only allows you to export the original clip as a new transcoded clip, meaning you can't apply any color or VFX to the shot before exporting, which kind of defeats the purpose. DaVinci allows you to do all of that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is jump straight into Resolve. I've got my timeline set up with all the shots I want to export individually. Um, instead of exporting out each clip individually, which I've had to do in the past plenty of times, and it's a complete pain in the butt, um, Resolve is going to save us all of that headache though and allow us to export all of these clips with their own unique identifier at the same time with just a few clicks of the mouse button. So here's my timeline. I've got all of my clips lined up. There's about 47 of them in total. All right, once all your clips are finalized and you have the color grade the way you want, go ahead and go down to the Deliver tab. Under Render, go ahead and set all of the settings and the codecs that you want to use. If you're going to be using this as an export for, say, a client and they want to be able to edit, choose a uncompressed codec, something like QuickTime, uh, uncompressed, or if you're going to do it for someone that who's just going to be using this as a final product, go ahead and select a compressed codec, something like H.264 or H.265. This is just going to help save on file space at the end. Next, we want to go up to the top here and click on Individual Clips. And once we do that, underneath that, there's going to be a, a little tab called File. Click File. And then this is where we're going to add our custom identifiers. So under our custom name, let's give it whatever the project title is that we're uh, exporting as. And then I'm going to choose a suffix as a number, starting with 0, 1. Now, the most important thing when you are exporting is to make sure that you use unique file names, and that's checked, and that you also check the add source frame count to the file name. When we click the add source frame count to the file name, what this is going to do is going to allow the computer to add additional numbers or sequencing numbers after something is exported. So if you don't click this per se, what's going to happen is it's going to render every single clip in our timeline, but it's going to give it the same name, which basically just means it's going to rewrite and write over the same file um, you know, 47 times in this case. So we don't want that. We want to have 47 individual clips. So make sure that you always click on the add source frame count to file in. This is going to help ensure that you get a unique identifier with each clip name um, and that also that each clip renders out um, appropriately. Next, you can go down here and it says uh, digits in file name. You can choose anywhere between 1 to 5. Um, I always just do 5 um, just as a safeguard. I know that this is obviously I'm not exporting out 20,000 or 10,000 different clips, but it just allows you to have that room in case you are exporting, especially if you're doing something like uh, a DPX format or something that's going to have a lot of different file names. So um, I would always make sure to use at least 5. After that, you don't have to worry about any of the other settings. Make sure that your render speed is set to maximum. This is going to help give you the most efficient workflow. And then once you've done that, we can see that our file name is already set up here. You just want to click on the location of where you want to save. Go ahead and do that. And then after that, go ahead and hit Add to Render Queue. And that's going to bring up our render queue. And then all we have to do is hit Render. And then once you hit Render, you'll start to see that the rendering happens. And you know, depending on what file size or resolution you're using, this could take a matter of a few minutes or it could take a few hours. Um, so really, it just depends on what it is you're shooting. Now, once you're done with all of that, and we'll let the render just continue through here for a second, we can go back to our location of where it's saved. I'm going to just cancel this job here. Open up the file location. And we can see that all of our different clips in here are uniquely identified and they're all rendered out at the specifications that we gave. Now this is a wonderful tool to utilize and I hope you found the information helpful. If you have any questions, just go ahead and plop them down below in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, as always, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe as it really helps keep me going. Um, and until next time, happy shooting.